Hello everybody and welcome to another GPOO video. Today we're going to be covering VRise's 1.0 full release where we're going to show you how to set up your very own server and all the little tips and tricks involved as well and I'll also show you where the wiki side of stuff is so if you have any questions like in how to change your day and night cycle or upload your own world it's all here and also have previous videos on the channel as well so don't forget to check them out and if you need 10% off your server use the link in the description of this video and you can head over to G portal from that link and it will give you 10% off okay so let's get into it so the first thing you want to do is head over to the G portal website using the link in the description and click on rent a server here, you'll be able to scroll down and you'll see V Rising here. And if you can't see it there, you can just type V Rising in here and you can order it straight from there. So with the purpose of this, I'm just going to quickly set one up. So you would just click order now, like so. And then you can choose pay with your balance. And then you'll wait for it to be activated. You'll get the pop-up and then it will load your server and that's you basically there so what we're going to do next is i'll give you a rundown on each of the pages so starting off we'll start off on a status page when you first arrive that'll give you the ip for your server how many players are on your server the how to if you're not sure about anything at any time you would click this and you can basically scroll through and it'll give you tips and tricks and basic settings questions faqs to help you out with your server so you don't get lost and you just Head straight there. Okay, back on the main status area, you'll have your server game load here. Well, your game server load here. That's how much is being used. Your data for your FTP in case you want to upload your own world uh, or saves. And then if you have any issues at any time, just click verify game files there. Make sure your server stopped before we carry on. So the next one is we're going to go into basic sense. This is where it gets a little bit too much because we have a lot to go through here we got basic settings broadcast messages extended settings pvp castle blah 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 all the way down what i'm going to do is show you how to quickly do it so if you if you want to play the 1.0 launch make sure it says 1.0 launch here and then you would choose a preset over here i highly recommend it's up to you if you want to do it. Uh, a differential one, like apply diff, basically overrides the settings that you've changed. Or if you say, for example, you want standard PVE, you would just click apply full here. So with that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to click apply full and we're just going to click confirm. This will load the server into a standard PVE server. For PVP, PVP you would do exact same. Now we're just going to look at the difficulty. We're just going to leave it as default. We don't need to change any of that. That concludes server setup. Moving on to basic settings. Here is where you would name your server and give it a description, a password. So we're going to just quickly do that. It's usually nice if you learn how to spell. Um, then we're going to set. We're not going to set a password for this because it's going to be an open server. But if you wanted to protect your server, you would put a password, an Arcom password, and enable Arcom. If you don't want that, like me, you just leave that blank. Now for this one here, you will need this just set to one. But it's up to you if you want. If you want everybody to have two slots or whatever, just leave it as one. Max players ten, depending on how many you have rented off of G Portal. Now, do you want to list it on Steam? That means that your uh, server will show up on the Steam's uh, list of servers. Then list on the EOS. And did you want to keep it secure? So banned people can join your server. Yes. Next up, we're going into save games. So you, if you have already uploaded your world, this is where you would change your save game name. Um, but for the purpose of this video, we're not doing that. I have covered that in another video. You can check that out. Auto save interval will be every 60, 15, and the daily reset intervals is zero, and any day of reset is any. 
right? So, but if you want to change that, you can. Um, just mess around with it if you want. It's in real days, so, you know, if you don't want to wipe your server, set it to zero. So moving on, we're going into broadcasting. Now, if you want to broadcast messages, like, uh, for example, um, you know, and then you can add that schedule and every 10 minutes that will post on the server. Delete it, simple, turn it off, simple. Next one is extended settings. Now sit back, relax, because this bit's about to get a bit more. Okay, war event settings interval is one hour. Now that's up to you how you want the Mortium war events to take place. Um, I would leave it as is. Same as for most settings in here, unless you know what you're doing, don't change it. Uh, war event game settings will be 20 minutes, 20 minutes on a major war, um, and then the weekday time start hour will be at zero, but that's up to you how you want to do it. And then you basically just go through it. You can see here it's all to do with the war stuff and the difficulty of the AI. I would leave that as one. Okay, so castle relocation, whether players can move their castles, I highly recommend leaving this on unless you just got a one and done everybody. When you choose your freaking castle, that's the end of that. All right, moving down, you've got your castle relocation cooldown. How many would you call uh, days? So, for example, if I set this to... Oh, I think it was... Um, in seconds yeah so it's every second so based on like on how many days you want to do it just leave as is if you're not sure um start and progression level the starting level for players will unlock gear resources and research to a certain level if you're just doing a fresh thing for 1.0 i highly recommend putting that as zero but you can always change that to like all the way up to cap uh price modifier stop modifier restock modifier i um i would leave as one but that's up to you like i said everything is user's choice castle raid protection time i don't need this uh because we're not doing pvp and same for that one free castle raids set uh where the castle raids should have no material costs that's also up to you if you want to like you know it's a pvp set and i'm not even gonna bother with it Castle, uh, expose free claim timer, the summit in time uh, is all up to you. Now here, one, make sure that this is the game mode you've selected. So if you are doing a PvE server like I'm doing, make sure it's PvE. Or if it's not and you're doing PvP, make sure the PvP is highlighted. Starting equipment, none, but you can also give it all the way up to level 80. Starting resources, none, but you can give up to 70. Allow castle destruction only when decaying. Uh, can always destroy castle hearts. Castle hearts can both be destroyed and claimed. I would leave it on the basic one if you don't know what you're doing. Um, death container permission is clan members, anyone or only self. That's up to you. Like if you're going out into the world and you get ganked by a bunch of AI um, or a player, if you're doing PvP, who do you want to be able to loot it? I would highly leave it um, for clan members. That way you can pick up your friend's stuff and bring it back to him so he doesn't lose it all. Research cost modifier is basically defined at 1. And same for time modifier. We'll leave that at 1. That's also if you want to speed it up, you can put it all the way up. Relic spawn type is plentiful, but you can also leave that to unique. So soul shards, for example, one of each. Um, can loot enemy containers? Yes. If it's PvP, no. If it's PvE. Bloodbound equipment defines if the player's equipment should be kept after death or not. I would highly leave this on for PvE and if you're doing something maybe a bit more interesting, turn it off. Teleport bound items defines if items should block you from teleport. No, turn that fucking thing off. Right. Craft rate modifier modifies the rate at which items can be crafted. Now, if you want to increase the, you know, thing on the server, put it to five. Uh, five and five, right? That way, you're not spending forever doing everything, okay? But if you want to leave it as basic, you just put it at one. And if you want to make it super fast, you put it at ten. 
Allow global chat on or off, that's up to you. Um, allow waypoints unlocked. I would leave this off unless you want them all unlocked straight away. Inventory stack modifi uh, multiplier, modifier, which is my brain. This is what happens when I'm ill and try to do videos. Um, you know, this is really up to you how you do this one. Same for the drop table modifier. All these I would leave basic unless you know what you're doing. Um, same for the blood essence one here. Leave it as is. You don't want to mess around with it. Unless you know what you're doing, of course. And like I say all the time, if you don't, just reset your server. Um, especially if you break stuff. Disabled, disconnected, dead, enabled. Um, right, so basically when, say, uh, your friend George has disconnected, will his body remain in the game? Yes, no. Okay. Disabled, uh, disconnected, dead. Timer, 60. Castle, minimum distance and floors is 2. Clan size is... I would put this, if you're doing a server, um, and let's say for example, it's only 10 slots. And those 10 slots are all your friends. And you all want to play the game together. Set it to 10. Okay? If you're just doing it where um, the set, you have 50 people on the server and you want to set it like, okay, so they're all going to be running around in groups of 5. Then you would set it to 5. Okay? Blood drain modifier, durability modifier, all these leave as is. Same for sun damage, all that kind of stuff. Unless you want to make it really hard, if you put that on up higher, uh, the, the minute they hit the sun, they'll die instantly. Uh, same for these, leave as is, unless you know what you're messing around with. Um, a lot of these are PvP only as well. So I wouldn't waste too much time in it. Now here is where you can set the day start hour. So, for example, duration in seconds is 1080. Uh, the day start hour would be, for us, would be, say, 7 a.m. And the day start minutes will be zero. Um, and then the end hour, we'll put it to 7 p.m. as well. Okay, so moving down the line, you've got day ends and minutes. Leave as is. Blood moon frequency, how often the blood moon happens. Um, I would leave this at 10. It's up to you, but it's up to you how much you want to do it and change it. Same for all these settings. Leave as is unless you know what you're messing around with because you don't want to mess up your server and not know what's, what's happened. So that concludes that section. Okay, so the next one we're going into is... Make sure I've got them all. Yep, PvP. I will cover it in this video. Um, so you got Siege Weapon Health. You can change that as to whatever you want if you want to give it more health free castle claims define if it should be free to claim a castle castle destroy and i would see i would say like unless you you're a pvp player and you know what you want to set up mess around with it have fun okay just make sure you back up your server here um late before you do it all all right inactivity kill enabled is up to you if you're doing it then you've got like inactivity settings here castle siege timers announce siege weapons spawn announce so i would put these on if i was doing a pvp server it would allow a little bit more interesting pvp pvp protection mode is 60 minutes i would disable that so it's instant the local time uh, the player damage mode Time restricted defies if uh, defines if a player versus player time should be used. I would always leave it as always on, but you can also change all that here in these basic settings. Castle damage mode is always, and you basically go down the settings and you can check these out for each yourself. All right, that concludes that part. Moving on to castle stat modifier. Now, unless you know what you're doing here, don't freaking mess around with it. Uh, I've had a few people come to me when I did the first initial stuff and they broke their servers and yeah, just leave as is, okay? Unless you know what you're doing, it, you know, you can also change the max border, tile limit, the server limit and the level five. So say for example, I'll quickly break it down for you. Moving down, it's about here, right? So your border limit, of how many slots uh, and the tiles you can build in a, for your castle. And that's basically it. Going all the way up to five, okay? So that concludes that section. And then here we got v, uh, the V-Blood unit settings. Now, 
it's up to you how you do this. You can have like choose who you want to have the V blood, what level. Um, I would leave as is. Don't even bother with that. Unlocked achievements. Collect the remains. Right. Uh, you. That's where we're going to start off. Okay. Um, and then just leave as is. But you can add them. Like you know, at the start of the game, you can add multiple ones. You can collect the remains. You could have like wielding the sword. But unless you know what you're doing, play around with it. Always come back and delete it or fix it. Okay. Unlock research items, leave as tier 1, unless you want to give them tier 3 straight away. The next thing is your Steam64 ID. Now, if you don't know how to get this, right, most people don't. You would just go to your Steam profile, and then you would just get your, uh, like, you would click edit profile, if I remember correctly. It's always a pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, what I do for that is I just type in Google my Steam ID like that and then you'll get the Steam ID finder which looks like this and then you just type in your your name or whoever's name you need and then it's like right here okay so you would just get that and then you would put that right there and click add admin okay for ban list exact same thing you find their name and then you type it in and then you copy that 64 ID and you hit create ban. Done, click save. That completes basic sense. Okay, moving on. File manager is where if you want to mod the game or if you want to upload your own world, all that's in here. Cover down a different video, not gonna do it again. Logs. Uh, once your server is available, you'll be able to see all the logs here. You can download it, refresh it, and always scroll, whatever. Daily restarts. Always have a daily restart. That way it stops server congestion. Like so. And then you would just set it at whatever time. I'm going to set it for 6 a.m. Because that's when I know everybody's in bed. Always make sure you turn on automatic backups. Just like so. And create your first backup. What this will do is, if you have any issues with your server after you've played around with those basic settings that I told you you shouldn't have done, um, <laughs> you can always come back here and just, you know, correct it by just clicking restore. Or you can delete it, you know, but you have a certain limited amount. For permissions, if you're not sure what this is, this is a simple one. All you need is, let's say, for example, you've got a friend who wants to run the server with you and you want to give them permission to edit the settings on the server. Well, what you would do here is tell them to sign up to G Portal, and then you would just get their username and add it there. And then if you need support at any time with G Portal, just click the support tab and then just go write a ticket, select the category, so it would be like V Rising, and then the server, there's V Server, and then the title, and then they describe the problem that you're having, and the support team will get to you. They're usually quite good and respond rather fast. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching another v, uh, like G-Port tutorial for V-Rising 1.0 release. Don't forget your 10% discount on the way out. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you all on the next guide, I suppose. Thanks for watching.